Janishore has been a tournament and cash game crusher for almost two decades. He has over $10 million in live tournament earnings, and he is no stranger to playing high stakes for a lot of money. Yeah, this Count is that. brutal for sure. Oh. It ain't so hard to fold trips, heads up in this spot, but I think Shannon has yet to make a mistake. Flips it. Let's see if Shore can use his many years of experience to navigate this very, very tricky spot when he bets the river with three of a kind and gets check raised all in. After the good. Yeah. You, you, if you, you hit him with it, heads win. up. I mean, they can't win. Yeah. You're, you're... We see Uncle Shannon Shore limping in preflop with the Queen 3 offsuit. You may be surprised to see that Queen 3 offsuit's even playable heads up, but it most definitely is, and it really is, when there is a big blind ante in play. Actually, from the button, you cannot fold a single hand because you have to put in half a big blind to try to win three big blinds total. Can't fold anything getting those odds and position. Ren with his queen five suited, I think has a pretty reasonable checking spot. He really does not want to raise and then get re-raised with a hand that flops pretty well. So he's gonna check. Let's go to the flop. Especially if you have Why a Why would you do that to somebody? You know, I mean, would you want to find out about Buddy if you're day five of the main? You gotta keep going. I mean, going. probably, yeah, I would wanna know. Well, I get the point. Top pair for sure, top two pair yeah. for Lynn. Uh, Lynn is continuing to just go nuts yeah. here. The flop comes queen, five, four. Completely setting up my Uncle Shannon Shore. For those who don't know, Shannon Shore is actually the best man in my wedding. We've been playing poker and traveling the circuit for a long time together. And uh, he's running into some pretty unlucky spots. This is an unlucky one. All right, queen, five, four. Ren checks, as I think he probably should. He could certainly just put out a bet if he felt inclined because it is a limp pot. You can't count on shedding, Shannon betting every time, but he does decide to go for the check. And then Shannon checks it back, which I actually like. Whenever you have top pair, terrible kicker, that is a very, very nice hand to check back on the flop because if you think about the hands that will pay you off on the flop and the turn and the river, it's going to be what, top pair, and better. I mean, maybe your opponent decides to call down a middle pair or something like that. But if you have top pair bad kicker and your opponent's going to call three big bets with mostly top pair better kicker, that's not good. So you can easily check it back and protect a lot of your very marginal hands that also want to check back. Because you know with this queen three, you're certainly not planning on folding on pretty much any run out. So I like the check back from Shannon. Good job. Let's see the turn. Cools off Shannon Ooh, in this check, spot. Check. We hear Negrano in the background. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he loves it. You can almost hear the whole story. Maybe talking word about Helmuth, I believe, in his social media posts. The turn brings an eight, and now Ren Len has a very, very easy bet, I think. When it goes check, check, that's a real bummer on the flop for him. And he really does not want to let it check through on the turn. So he needs to bet. And I think you should start betting pretty big. Given there is a straight draw and a flush draw available, I think you should be betting something like pot in this scenario, maybe even a little bit bigger. Because if Shannon has any sort of draw or any sort of bluff catcher, he's going to be calling a bet. And if you think about a lot of Shannon's check back range on the flop, it's going to be a lot of hands like a bad queen or five or four, or maybe a hand like ace eight or a hand like ace seven, or a hand like ace six. All these hands have decent equity and don't especially want to fold in position, even facing a kind of big bet. So I think in this spot, Len should probably go a little bit bigger than he did, but whatever, that's fine. Facing the bet, Shannon Shore, like I said on the flop, already knows he's gonna have an easy call down, and we have a nice easy hand where he's gonna lose a little bit of money. Len leads for 200K, Shore makes oh, the call, geez. and another queen on My the river. My goodness, this could be a huge, possible double up there's not a lot in there oh, though maybe we checks. go for the check raise well i thought shannon was gonna lose a little bit of money on the river but uh now he's gonna lose a lot he rivers the trips and lynn actually gets a little bit tricky and goes for the check i actually don't mind the check at all whenever you block a lot of the very obvious calling hands that your opponent could have if you make a big bet your options then become bet tiny as you may want to do some portion of the time with some of your range and you may want to slot some nuts in there, like this hand. Or you should check. And especially if Ren does not want to have a tiny um, 
betting range, then you should almost certainly check this type of hand because this is a great hand that can put in a check raise. And in the scenario, if Shannon does have a five or a four. He may not even call a big river bet if he does face that. Uh, he is going to check that back a lot of the time, so you're not going to get much value from that either way. But if Shannon does have some sort of busted draw, give him, I don't know, king seven, he is almost certainly going to go for a river bluff. And if he does happen to be set up and has a queen, you're going to win a bunch of money. So this is a spot where I definitely like the check from Len. Let's see what Shannon does. As the case queen rolls off on the river. Oh, this is tasty. And this is trouble for sure. Uh, there's an undertow at the beach. We're going to need all swimmers out of the water. 850. Uh -oh. And the over bet by shore. In this situation on the river, Shannon's range is either going to be a really strong hand like trips, a very marginal hand like a five or a four, maybe a middle pocket pair, or a busted draw. And if Shannon does have a very marginal hand, like let's say he does have pocket jacks here, he probably does want to go for value, but I think he wants to go for a medium bet size. But with his queens and better and some busted draws and some just random weird floats that happen to get here on the river, I think he needs to go for a very big size because Len's range looks a whole lot like a bluff catcher. And if he does have a bluff catcher, he's going to feel inclined to call some portion of the time when a lot of draws miss. So I definitely think this is a spot where Shannon wants to have a big bet size and he wants to be using the big bet sizes with a queen and better, right? And if you think about his flop strategy... He really shouldn't have a whole lot of queen, so even though this is a very weak queen, it is essentially one of the best hands in Shannon's range. He does go for the very big bet. I like it. It's not going to work out for him, though. Which is the absolute dream music to Lynn's ears. Hit him with the Tom Brady, Tony. All of it. Yeah, this Count is brutal. Or they're brutal for sure. Oh. He knows. What bluffs could Tony possibly have here, right? It, uh, like a counterfeited fives and fours. The, the, you cert Once in a while, theory says you can turn those hands into bluffs. You're blocking full houses. But heads up, this matchup, this dynamic... Is there really anything that you think that Lynn could be bluffing with here? So hard to fold trips heads up in this spot, but I think Shannon has yet to make a mistake at this final table. All of his big decisions have been dialed in and spot on. And remember, because of that last big decision against Oya, he's pretty limited on his time banks. I think he's all out. I yeah. think he's, he's all in with time banks right now. This is it. We got 30 seconds to decide. Seconds left. We're flipping a coin Flips to the side. Wow. Wow. That's the luckiest coin flip of <laughs> Shannon Shore's is. career. What a nasty spot Shannon is in. And after a long tank, a long bit of thought, he flips a coin and he comes up correct. And Shannon makes a gigantic fold that I'm not sure I could have made. The tough thing about playing against players in the high stakes, pretty much all players in the high stakes, is they will sporadically put in bluffs and put you in a nasty spot. Now, Ren did look relatively at ease putting in this uh, check raise all in. He used no time banks. He seemed relatively comfortable counting the chips. He didn't seem especially perturbed or annoyed or uncomfortable, which is usually a sign that your opponent... It's not uncomfortable, meaning they probably have a pretty good hand, or they're just really good at running savage bluffs. A lot of the players in the high stakes games as well will have particular spots that they love getting after it. And for some of these players, it is on the river. They love putting in river bluff raises. Now, I don't know if that's Ren Len, but some people will do that. So in the high stakes, you can't just go around folding every single hand that's not the nuts. You cannot drastically overfold against everyone in the high stakes because you will get run over and you're gonna have a tough time winning but in general in almost all games against almost all people i think this is just a pretty easy fold because your opponent when they check shove you on the river has literally trips or better 
And if you have trips, no kicker, you lose. Life is easy. But when there are some busted draws or your opponent may be a little bit active, then, uh, you know, you got to find some calls. One thing Shannon has going for him here <clears throat> is that he overbet the river. When you overbet the river, you're essentially announcing, I either have a really good hand or I have nothing. And if your opponent has nothing, or if, if your opponent knows you have a really good hand or nothing, they don't need to raise with much of anything as a bluff, right? Because they can just easily call with all their thin marginal value hands because they beat all of your bluffs, right? But they also don't want to raise all that often because if they're raising into a lot of nut hands that just aren't folding, then they're going to lose with all of their good but non-premium hands. So this is a spot where I do think Ren's shoving range will end up being very, very strong. So the question is, will he find enough bluffs to justify Shannon calling off with a bluff catcher. Now, to be fair, a good bluff catcher in this scenario is three of a kind because you block full houses, right? Ugh. The question is, is should you still make the fold? Look, if you slotted me into Shannon's spot here, I don't know if I could have made this fold, but Shannon is literally one of the best players in the world. He figures it out. He makes the fold of a lifetime, and it turns out it is correct. Good job. Good work. And that's why he's one of the best players in the game who has been crushing for the last 20 years. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Click the like and subscribe button below. Go follow Shannon Shore on Twitter. Why not? He doesn't post a ton, but he gets in there and he battles hard. And he's one of my favorite people in the world. Make sure when you value bet the river and get check raised against almost everyone, if you don't have the nuts, you should probably just let it go. I'll talk to you next time.